So over here is where I do the compost. I bury the food scraps. So we're gonna be doing a little experiment and showing you guys what happens when this is buried for a month. And then I'm gonna do another experiment on how what happens after a year. So we're gonna go ahead and dig up what I put in here about a month and a half ago and see what's left of it. Because I did the exact same thing. I dug it up, buried it. I've been doing this every month, burying um, my all my food, my food scraps, and all of my cardboard uh, materials. And this month, or the last six weeks, I really accumulated a lot. I went, I go through quite a bit of eggs, sometimes three a day, three eggs a day, and you can see how many cartons I have. So let's go ahead, and bury this, and you guys can see what happens when you bury your food scraps and kitchen waste for a month or six weeks long. This is like a 20 pounds of food scraps, just coffee grinds, at tons of eggshells. Excellent for your, your garden. A lot of banana peels, uh, different fruit and vegetables. So let's go ahead and dig this up and see what it looks like. All right, so I got everything in there. You can see I threw a layer of the uh, all well, the stuff on the bottom, then I put the food scraps, and then another layer of this on top. So it's kind of like a sandwich. Layers of that, so that'll break down evenly. And then over here, you can see this is what it looks like after it's been uh, the same thing I did probably three or four times, but it's it breaks down into the dirt. You can still see remnants of it, but. So I always put the new stuff at the bottom. I dig it back up and put it on the side and then I'll simply dump this back on. So this is how you basically bury your food scraps. And also, um, no animals will be able to get to this. So if you live in an area where there's bears, if you bury it enough, uh, they shouldn't be able to smell it, I'm hoping. But don't count my word on it. But I wouldn't be doing it if you have bears anyway. So this is still going to attract probably animals. But so this is the stuff on top here is the halfway decomposed. So I try to get the that stuff on top, an even layer. And also I want to show you something else I add another carbon source. See, see all this eggshells, egg cartons, the egg cartons in the cardboard, that's a carbon source. The green food, all the recycled kitchen scraps, that's the nitrogen. You want to even an even balance. And then I'm mixing in some of the, the dirt that's just existing around here. Now right here you can see I got, this is some more of the, the carbon source. So I got these leaves, dried, dried leaves here that I'm gonna, I've been saving so I can sprinkle those on. Watch this. There we go, so that's a nice mixture. That'll break down real nice. Nice, even layering. I'm gonna water the heck out of this too. So go ahead and push this old dirt that still has a mixture of decaying matter over the last couple months. So again, I dig it down as deep as I can, dig up the old stuff, come back, and bury, bury the new stuff down deep as I can with the uh, halfway decayed matter on top of that. Then on the very top of that, I like to, I like to have a little bit of just pure dirt. I don't want to have too much debris because I do have raccoons 
I don't want anything to attract. But anything on top now is not going to be really desirable to a raccoon because it's already been underground for like two months. What they want is the fresh, like a fresh eggshell. You know, something new that has egg in it or something edible to these uh, raccoons, but nothing will, okay. Nothing in here is gonna attract. So, I'm not filling the hole all the way back up. This will be done over a course of about 12 months. So I will plant a big fruit tree in this location in about 12 months or so after things decompose, but I'll keep doing the same process about every month. So already it's, this is like my fourth time. It's about four months. So I got about eight more months of doing this exact same thing. And again, I'll also add a lot of other amendments, compost and other soils to this. I'm not gonna plant directly in it, but it'll be a good base to my tree. Massive amount of material. You saw how much I had in that, that five gallon bucket, all that cardboard. So multiply that times 12. Imagine that much material, all decomposed. Tons of coffee. I go through maybe a, there's probably 12 pounds of coffee in here, you know, in a year's time, and a thousand, thousand eggshells, um, tea bags, like hundreds of tea bags, which are super good. All types of nutrients that are like banana peels extremely good. I eat quite a bit of the bananas, so there's so much nutrition in the soil within a year's time that um, basically what you'll get is, let me show you over here what happens when you bury your food scraps in kitchen waste for a year, you're going to get massive trees like this. This is a papaya tree. has been growing here for about two years in the same manner that I just am showing you right there with that hole. I planted, I did my compost pile here about four feet down, composted for a year straight, and you will get massive, massive papayas just like this. Those are about big as my head. And that's the main ingredient in this in this planter right here is uh, that compost. So I can it goes to show you how much how well it's doing in here. I don't know if you've ever seen a papaya growing this well here in uh, San Diego. First time I've ever been seeing one growing. So inside of my homemade compost pile. That's what happens, so highly encourage you guys saving all of your food scraps like I do. You can see I got a lot of water coming out here. I just want to show you how long you need to soak it for. And you want to keep this um, wet for the entire time. You're gonna, you don't want this thing to ever dry up. The water is what helps break everything down. So, remember there's all that cardboard in there, all that paper, we want to soak all of that so it starts decomposing. Everything decomposes better um, with water. And also it's going to settle, settle down and there won't be any way for any animals to dig this up, it'll be solid kind of more packed in dirt. I can even sprinkle a small layer of regular dirt on top. See, I still have plenty of dirt over there I can sprinkle on, but. So the key is to get, I would say, like five gallons or even 10 gallons of water. 
this is a, a large area and it's, I want it to go down. I think we dug down about 12 inches, about a foot, maybe 16 inches. So that should be pretty good. I'm going to turn off the water, but and we should be good in a minute here. So if you guys ever wondered what it's like when you bury your food scraps and kitchen waste for a year straight and then plant a tree in it. Well, you, you know now, I also did it in this planter too. But right now I just got carrots, carrots growing in here, but the roots don't have to go that far with these carrots. But this thing is loaded with carrots. But again, this one, this planter went down four feet. I did composting here. I'll probably put a tree in after this, this summer massive amount of food there and my papaya tree so not bad for homemade compost I'd recommend you guys go out and do the same thing. 